I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend. Well, today we've spoken about this topic several times, but I will go on and on speaking about it until people learn to start making lifestyle changes and understand the seriousness of having high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a silent killer. Most people are very casual about high blood pressure when they get it. <clears throat> It's so common for people to say, oh, I have high blood pressure, like, you know, it's nothing, like they got the flu or they have a cold or cough, which means they've actually accepted it as being okay. Now, very, very few, very, very few people have high blood pressure, which is caused because of bad genetics, a kidney problem, and in, in turn, there's high blood pressure and all of that stuff. But for everyone else where your high blood pressure is caused because of your poor lifestyle, it's time that you wake up and understand the seriousness of the situation. Now by saying this, I don't mean to endear fear into you. In fact, I don't want you to see it as fear. I want you to see it as motivation to start doing things to make sure that you start controlling and reducing your high blood pressure. The current mentality of people across the world, this is not just our country, is, <clears throat> oh, I have high blood pressure and I'm on pills from my doctor. Okay, and they act as if like their life's all good and everything's gonna be fine. Well, let me tell you something right now. You are still sick. You still have an underlying problem that your body's trying to tell you, okay, you have high blood pressure and you're on a pill which has brought down your blood pressure, great. It still means you have a root cause to the problem which you're not addressing. And sooner or later, your pressure is gonna go up, you're gonna get more medication, or you're gonna start having other issues. Now, what are some of the dangers of high blood pressure? Right from strokes to heart attacks, it doesn't mean if you're on high blood pressure, medication that you're going to avoid all of these things. You still have to work with the root cause and lifestyle changes. Strokes, heart diseases, connections with dementia, Parkinson's, kidney problems. For men, erectile dysfunction is a huge, huge emotional problem. And men start trying to pop different kinds of pills and all of that stuff. And when you talk about high blood pressure, they're like, hey, we're on a pill already. Well, you need to know that most erectile dysfunction is also caused because of high blood pressure, which is uncontrolled. Then you have blood clots and you have osteoporosis, all of these issues. Now, you talk about osteoporosis, people only think there's calcium, that we need to up our calcium, which is the biggest lie and the biggest scam when it comes to, high, uh, when it comes to osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, go a step deeper, you'll find it happens in people who are acidic, people who have high blood pressure, high blood pressure, you're flushing out more calcium through your kidneys, out of your body. So you see, everything in the human body is interconnected. The reason why the world is so sick today, even though we have nutritionists, doctors, organic foods, nutraceuticals, medicines, fancy hospitals, and all of that is because we're treating the human body like a car. There's a problem with one part, we treat one part. High blood pressure, yeah, let's just treat high blood pressure. Diabetes, let's just look at pre and post sugar levels. Heart problem, let's just look at cholesterol. We fail to understand, and that is the stupidity of the human race currently of most people. We fail to understand that every human, every human body is comprised of different organs and cells and tissues, and they're all interconnected, working together. So if you have a problem with diabetes, yes, you want to be looking at your pancreas, you want to be looking at acidity, you want to be looking at your weight, you want to be looking at your food, your sleep, your stress. The same thing with high blood pressure. You can't just look at a symptom and then, you know, shove a medicine down someone's throat and expect to fix the problem. Now, today I'm going to talk about powerful lifestyle changes and simple foods that you can start consuming right away. This is not a replacement for your doctors. It is not a replacement for your high blood medi medi uh, pressure medication. You cannot just jump off your high blood pres pressure medication. It will harm you. If you are going to get off your medication, work with your doctor, work with your lifestyle, show them that it is possible to bring down a dip in the pressure and most doctors will be happy to get you off your pill at some given point. There are a lot of good reasons that doctors keep people on their high blood pressure pills because of their bad lifestyle. They drink too much, they smoke too much, they don't sleep, they don't care about their diet. So your doctor is right to keep you on that pill just to safeguard you. But all the other people who are willing to make lifestyle changes and their food changes and improve their sleep and everything else, your pressure will drop and your doctors will work with you to get you off that pill if it is 100% possible. The first food, garlic. Garlic is extremely, extremely powerful when it comes to reducing your blood pressure. Now, it's a blood thinner, it helps you with your cholesterol and numerous other benefits, right? From your immunity to your hair to your skin. But today, we're talking about high blood pressure. Garlic consumed raw. 
Cooked garlic also isn't too bad, but you lose some of the properties. So if you don't like eating raw garlic in the morning, you don't like mixing it with your food, you know, what you can do is you can chop raw garlic into small little bits, sprinkle it over your food. Or you can even chop it, but keep it exposed to oxygen for at least about a minute. Because Allison, that does the magic in garlic, that does the magic for your pressure and all of your health, it needs to be activated by exposure towards oxygen. You don't like biting it, cut it into small pieces, expose it, and then you can even swallow it with water. Your body should break it down. My favorite, favorite food when it comes to high blood pressure is amla. This is called Indian gooseberry. Yes, all the berries don't only exist in Europe and across other countries. We also have berries in India. You have strawberries, you have Indian gooseberries called the amla extremely extremely powerful not when it just comes to diabetes but also your high blood pressure so mixing even half a teaspoon of amla powder with water and maybe a teaspoon of a good raw unpasteurized honey because a honey is also great for your blood vessels and your circulation when you have high blood pressure you need to understand one thing circulation of blood is compromised in the body so now you have a circulatory problem of your blood and you have the wrong pressure which is absolutely dangerous because every cell in the human body requires blood circulating all the time with the right pressure. So just because you're on a pill and it's kept your systolic and diastolic low, it still means you have a problem in your body and you need to fix that. So a little bit of amla powder. Now you can do fresh amla in the season, you can do amla juice, but dried powder is extremely, extremely potent. Half a teaspoon with a glass of water, <clears throat> optional, you can add a teaspoon of honey. Pure raw unpasteurized honey has medicinal benefits. If you're just getting organic, chemical free honey, all of that stuff, it needs to be written raw unpasteurized on the bottle if you're trying to get the medical benefits. You can have that on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. If you forget to have it on an empty stomach, you can have it 45 minutes after your breakfast, lunch or dinner, but then minus the honey and only do the amla, ju the amla powder with the water. Green tea. Black tea is extremely healthy for us when done without sugar and all of that stuff. Green tea is also extremely beneficial. The polyphenols found in green tea has a positive impact on your blood pressure. So instead of consuming all your sugary beverages and too many cups of tea and coffee throughout the day, having maybe a cup or two to three cups of green tea, preferably an hour after your meals, is excellent for your blood pressure. When it comes to fruits, all fruits and vegetables are great for us, but watermelon stands out. Watermelon during the right season had is also great for your blood pressure. Onion. Onion is rich in flavanols called quercetin. And quercetin basically has everything to do with dilating your blood vessels, which means it can immediately reduce the amount of pressure. So it is already an Indian custom in most cultures to have raw onion with every meal. It's part of our salads. And I don't know why we moved away from this. Raw onion is great for your health, especially when it comes to high blood pressure. Anything that contains a vitamin C, like lemon, lemon water, your vitamin C rich fruits and vegetables, or even a vitamin, a, a vitamin supplement of vitamin C is great for pressure because of the impact it has on your blood vessels. You think blood pressure, you think blood vessels. As simple as that. Beetroots. You can eat the beetroot or you can make it into a juice. Juice, you'll use quite a few beetroots, which is great. Nitric oxide dilates your blood vessels, reducing your pressure instantly. Now, I'm not saying this is a replacement for your pill, but if you start building into your lifestyle, over, over time, you will find that your high blood pressure starts getting better. And then we have, of course, the lifestyle changes. Deep breathing works like magic. I can't tell you, you know, it, you know what amazes me about human mentality, the things which are free, the things which are easy to do, people don't do them. People don't do them when it comes to their health. They don't give enough of importance to, you know, deep breathing. We've done tests in front of patients where we've shown them their systolic and diastolic pressure in front of us. We make them sit with their back straight and we make them do two minutes of a slow inhale and a slow exhale. And two minutes later, we show them their systolic and diastolic. And your points can come down from 10 to even 20, your systolic and your diastolic. Something as simple as deep breathing can reduce your blood pressure. So the more we do that, the better we're going to be. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Of course, the more you exercise, the better it is for your circulatory system, your blood vessels, and your high blood pressure. And last and not the least is the quality of your sleep. There is enough of medical evidence showing that less sleep, more high blood pressure. So you sleep as your generic drug to keep you healthy, to prevent and to heal. A good night of sleep, good blood pressure. 
sleep deprivation, sleeping at different times every night, you will find that your blood pressure does not get better. So if you put all these little things together, you try, you do it for 10, 15, 20 days, you will see a reduction in your blood pressure. If this doesn't motivate you enough, let me tell you right now, okay, blood pressure today is a serious, serious, silent killer. You have diabetes and you have high blood pressure. I'm not trying to scare you. I want you to see it as motivation. Diabetes and high blood pressure is the worst combination for your kidney. You can literally, literally predict that a patient with diabetes and high blood pressure may end up with kidney disease because of the hardening of the arteries in the kidney, the hardening of the nephrons. And yep, they'll have medicines to treat you all the way through. It's about time human beings wake up and decide that take my meds if I need them. But what lifestyle changes should I be responsible for? Should I be accountable for? It's my body, it's my life, it's my health. You are stupid if you entrust your entire health and your body to a doctor, a nutritionist, a personal trainer. They are enablers. You are still responsible for your health and your body. And if you see it that way, you will automatically generate something called self-motivation to look after yourself. People talk about self-love and all of that crap today. It's crap when we look at it in a superficial way. Self-love starts with you respecting your own body, your own health, your own vehicle, your own carrier of you, your spirit, your physical self, your heart, your mind. That's your vehicle that carries you. If you can't respect your body, there is no reason, there is no reason that you know, you're going to be healthy. There's no reason that things should work for you in your favor if you cannot respect the divine gift of life which is given to you. It is no one's responsibility for your health but yours. And the more and more high blood pressure cases we see, the more suffering we're going to see, the more brain-related diseases we're going to see, heart attacks, everything I mentioned, strokes, Alzheimer's, and then people look, they feel sad and they say, oh yeah, everyone's sick. You know, all this sympathy is disgusting after, an, after a point because people have the ability to make changes. They just don't do it. They just don't do it. And now we've accepted suffering as part of life. Suffering, unnecessary. In all, everyone's life, there will be suffering. We will go through ups and downs and every human being will go through suffering. But suffering which we could have prevented, now that's a disgrace. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.